TUM has the reputation of being extremely difficult. People joke that getting into TUM is actually easier than staying in there. But how is it really like? How many people fail exams? What makes it challenging and unique? Definitely watch this until the end if you want to get a realistic impression. Exam types and structure at TUM. How are exams structured across different faculties? Are there multiple choice, oral exams, practical tests and so on? Also, what makes TUM exams formats unique or particularly challenging? The first thing to know is that the exam types and structure is quite different from many other countries. University is very different from school. Attendance is not part of the grade and no one cares whether you actually go to class or not. You can decide. Some people just go abroad, spend their time surfing and then start preparing one month before the exam. I wouldn't recommend it, but some people do it like that. Besides the attendance, you don't really have homework that you have to hand in in most classes. You get exercises that you should do, but nobody actually checks whether you do it or not. And finally, there is no such thing as middle terms or anything else like that. So this means you will have one big exam in the end of your semester. Well, not one big exam, you will have five to six big exams. One for each class that you take. And let me tell you, they are on another level. After I finished school, I started university. I didn't worry too much about it. In school, two days of studying were mostly enough for the exams. So maybe one week should be enough for university exams, right? Absolutely wrong. And apparently many other people underestimated these exams as well. Many got bad grades, like bad grades. In one exam, 35% of the people failed, I think. And I was one of them. So these exams take a lot of preparation. Most people start hard preparation, intense preparation, about four to six weeks before the first exam. This means going to the library in the early morning and leaving the library at night. But if you fail an exam, it's not that bad, right? <laughs> uh, it depends. Because there is something that is called GOP, or in German, Grundlagen und Orientierungsprüfung. GOPs are regular exams at TUM that take place in the first one or two semesters. They are quite normal exams with the difference that if you don't pass them in your first two semesters, you will get kicked out. Yes, you heard that right. You'll be expelled. Not all of the degree programs have them though, and it is a bit different for each program. In my case, I had to pass three out of four exams in the first two semesters. And with these exams, they are not forgiving. Do you remember the exam that I wrote where 35% of the people failed? Yes, this was one of them. The good thing is that you will get the chance to retake the exam one more time. And typically, you would expect that if the decision of whether a student is allowed to continue their studies or not depends on the exam, they would be nice and try to help students out by making an exam that people would pass, right? Well, I hope so. Nevertheless, I spent my whole semester break preparing for this exam. I didn't do any vacation, I didn't go anywhere else, I only studied maths for one month straight just to be confronted with another brutal exam, which I luckily passed, but 72% did not. But are all of the exams like this? Was this an exemption? I will talk about this later. But first you need to know how they test you in these exams. And by the way, if you want to have more helpful information, you can download my studying at TUM guide for free after you've watched this video, just by clicking on the link in the video description. In many other countries, you'll have class sizes of maybe 40 people. But I remember clearly my very first day at TUM, where I entered the classroom and I was shocked. In school, I was used to having maybe another 30 people in my class, but now I suddenly found myself in a lecture hall that could have been a small concert hall. Like literally, it had huge massive speakers, three huge massive screens and even a second floor. More than a thousand students can fit in there. And see, because in some of the courses there are a lot of people, it is not possible to have written exams where the professors check just by hand for every single student. Because of this, I had a lot of multiple choice exams in my first semester, or rather single choice because only one answer out of four is correct. So that should be easy, right? <laughs> nope. Let's say you have a task where you have to calculate something that maybe takes five minutes and you'll get five points if you do everything correct. In a normal exam, if you would make a mistake, the professor would just deduct a point for it. But since you had the remaining parts correct, you would still get four points. Not in these multiple choice exams. Here you will have to choose one out of four different results. And if you made one single mistake somewhere, then you don't know the correct answer and you don't get any points. Even worse, you see that you made a mistake because none of the answers is what you actually have as a result. So now you face the decision whether you should try to find the mistake or continue with the next question. This is a dilemma that puts you under enormous stress because what makes these exams difficult is that you don't have much time. I remember sitting in one of those big lecture halls in my first semester and my stomach felt a bit off, I was nervous, I was sweating because I was about to write one of the exams which was known to be practically impossible to finish all of the tasks on time. And I mean, everybody knew this. It was known that there was not enough time. 
In the beginning, you had to write your name and student number on each of the 15 sheets of the exam. And because there was so little time, many students actually bought custom-made stamps for them, with which they could stamp their name and the number on each single sheet just to save one minute. They really tried to test you, how well you are able to make difficult decisions under time pressure. We had 90 minutes for the exam and the first task was huge with many subtasks. It would give you 15 points out of 90 points. And here's the thing, the people who started with the first task would be the ones who got the worst grades because it took so long that you didn't have enough time to finish the other task. To tackle this kind of exam, you need to apply a simple yet effective strategy. And instead of just starting right away and finishing one task, one after the other, you will take one or two minutes to read through the exam and estimate how much time you will need for each task and think about how many points you'll get for the task. Then you should start with the task for which you think you'll get the most points in the shortest amount of time. Because remember, you cannot finish the whole exam. Okay, but multiple choice exams were mostly only the case during the first year of my bachelor's. And also not for every single degree program you'll have this. This just depends on what you study. Some other programs have less students. But besides multiple choice exams, we'll also have written exams, presentations and oral exams as other formats. For written exams, you will have to know that there will always be time pressure. So it is really important to get a feeling for which task to solve first and when it is time to go to the next question if you're stuck with one. This can be tough to decide in an exam, but you might lose more points if you try to get everything right than if you would skip to the next question if something is hard to answer. What I found with oral exams is that they are not necessarily easier than written exams, except for the fact that you might have more time to answer a question and that the professor is able to ask about something again if you forgot something to mention. So that is quite nice. And the same is with presentations. If you worry about oral exams or presentations because you're not an English or German native speaker, don't worry about it too much. Tom is very international and the professors know that. Professors are very nice in this regard. Sometimes you can choose whether you want to present in English or German or a mix of it. For example, I had one group presentation and two of us hold the presentation in German and one of us hold the presentation in English. It's fine. They don't worry about it. They will always keep in mind that you're an international student, that the English or German, whatever you speak, my English is also not perfect, so they will not consider it for the grade. Grading system and expectations. How hard is it to get top grades at TUM? What are the common grading practices? There's one thing that you wouldn't expect. The German grading system works as follows. You can get grades from 1.0 to 5.0. However, 1.0 is the best grade, 5.0 is the worst, and with a 4.0 you will pass an exam. Then there are increments of about 0.3. You can get the grades 1.0, 1.3, 1.7, 2.0, 2.5, you got it, right? And yes, you can also get 4.3, 4.7, and 5.0. If you fail an exam, Tom wants to let you know how bad you failed. Now, I actually think it's quite nice. How hard is it really to get very good grades? Because there's only limited time, you have to know how to study efficiently and how to prioritize. Once you get this right, top grades are definitely achievable. If you have a very bad grade and a lot of people had very bad grades in one exam, just wait for a second. Because sometimes the professors decide after an exam to change the amount of points you need to have to get a certain grade. This means that once you get your grade in your online system, it can still change within a certain amount of time. However, the professors are only allowed to change it in a way so that students will have better grades than before. This has actually happened to me a couple of times before. Study load and time management. How much time do students typically spend preparing for exams? Are all-nighters and intense cramming common at TUM? So in general, from my experience, students typically try to start intense preparation about four to six weeks before their first exam. This means going to the library in the morning and leaving the library at night, every day until all of the exams are over. Many people, especially in their first semesters, also start doing all-nighters and cramming and everything before their exams. Exam failure and retake policy. What happens if students fail an exam? How common are retakes? Are there particular notorious exams with high failure rates? As long as you don't fail those GOP exams that I mentioned in the beginning, you don't need to worry about it too much. In theory, you can fail and retake an exam as many times as you need until you have passed. Once you have passed, you cannot retake it anymore. So once you've passed, you don't have a chance to improve your grade. Most people try to pass on their first try, while other people have a different strategy and they'll go to the first exam and just read through all of the questions, try to memorize them, and after the exam, they will write it down somewhere and start preparing for the retake exam with the hope that they can now prepare more efficiently. However, I would always recommend to try to pass on the first try, because the retake exam takes place in the regular exam season of the following semester. This means once you fail an exam, you will have to study for this class again and review all of the lecture materials 
in addition to having those five to six big exams that you would have to write anyway. And this can be very tough because once you have to write one exam, you'll have more exams. So this means it's more likely that you fail another exam and then it's just like, it's a spiral. Especially the exams in the first and second semester are a bit more difficult. But once you have managed to pass them, then classes will be more fun and the grades will get better. Support systems and resources. What resources does TUM offer for students facing exam stress? So regarding exams, there's typically not much individual support. However, typically in the last lecture before the exam, the professors will give a lot of information. They will talk you through the exam, how long it is, how many points it got and so on. They will also tell you what you should focus on and what kind of questions you can expect. Sometimes professors will share sample questions or maybe an old exam so that you know what to expect. And they will also talk about which parts of the lecture are not relevant for the exam. So then you can just leave it out and don't worry about it. So what are the takeaways? Yes. Exams at TUM can be difficult, especially in the first semester. However, once you understand how the system works, how the exam works, and once you manage the first one or two semester, you will have adapted and you will figure it out. So don't worry about it too much. What I found was that for calculation exams, the questions in the exam were mostly based on exercises we got during the semester as practice. So if you really understand these exercises, then you will be well prepared. For other questions relating to knowledge in a specific field, it is wise to think about what questions could be asked about the material. And then you'll put more focus on the parts that you think are more likely to be relevant in the exam. With this, you should be in a good position to get good grades. If you want to know more tips for studying a tome that gave me very good grades, let me know in the comments. See you in the next time.